When we realised that we were going to open this building in late 2014, uh, through the research I'm working on for World War I, we happened to find out that it was very close to the day in which 60 Māori volunteers marched out of Gisborne for uh, World War I and ended up at Gallipoli. Uh, and, and it was almost to the day. Ipatua, <laughs> This country is at war with Germany. It was argued in both world wars that it was our duty as um, responsible citizens to serve our Māori leaders, you know, pressed the government and said these men will volunteer because they understand it's their duty. C Company is one of five uh, companies that was made up the 28th Māori Battalion. It drew its men from Tōrere in the Eastern Bay of Plenty through to here in Gisborne, uh, Muriwai just south of here. There's about 950 men in the Māori Battalion who, who have links to the C Company region. Cowboys and Indians were big on the movies and that was the, the fad at the time, so a lot of them used to dress that way. They were called the Cowboys because of their, uh, I guess, their horse riding. A lot of those guys would have signed up for the opportunity to get away. Uh, a lot of them were just milking cows or um, working on farms. Uh, doing labouring jobs and the fact that you, you're presented with uh, clothing, money, a trip overseas um, and you also put up on uh, a bit of a pedestal when, you're in, the, when in, you're in the army, all of that would have appealed to them. The last thing that would have been on their mind is um, actually having to kill or be killed. This bigotry and uh, racial discrimination was a bit more prevalent than we see it today. The Māori couldn't, here in Gisborne, in the 1940s, couldn't get accommodation in hotels, uh, largely because of race. So little things like that, um, that Māori would have been thinking that we don't have equal citizenship as promised under the treaty. Uh, and for those reasons, I think, um, they probably overperformed in order to, to make some changes back here. Overperformed in, in war, and that cost them. The 28th Māori Battalion's history, if you go through it, each company, uh, there are different campaigns where you would point to that company, that was their campaign where they featured strongly. C Company clearly is point two oh nine Tunisia, where the only victory across the water to a Māori in World War II was once, uh, Second Lieutenant uh, Moana Ngārimu. That was C Company um, to the fore. 
um, but there were other other times in the Italian campaign and uh, Crete and North Africa where they um, stood out. Down the gangway come men of the Maori Battalion, 780 men of a battalion that was volunteered two days after war began. They fought through Greece and Crete, in Egypt, Libya and Tunisia, through Italy to Trieste. Their casualty rate was five in seven. Seventy percent of all of these men, the 950, were either killed or wounded or made prisoners of war. Seven in every ten who went, uh, your chances of coming back unscathed uh, were pretty slim. And then those who did come back unscathed had, um, I guess, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. I think that's another reason why people feel this project so deeply because they know um, somebody who was a casualty of World War II that was in C Company. When we realised that we were going to open this building in late 2014, uh, through the research I'm working on for World War I, we happened to find out that it was very close to the day in which 60 Māori volunteers marched out of Gisborne for uh, World War I and ended up at Gallipoli. Uh, and, and it was almost to the day. The 60 marched out from here, just outside this building, across the road. And, you know, it is strange how things come about, but we've built a, a memorial house right where they marched out from. And we've done it 100 years from when they left, which, you know, is why there's a significant wall in here that's dedicated to the Māori contingent and the Māori Pioneer Battalion. It just happened um, when they launched the World War I centenary at Parliament. I saw some guys in World War I uniforms. Uh, I knew they were Sir Peter Jackson's uh, uniforms. And could we borrow them for uh, what we're doing up here? He said, we'll do better than that. If you can get 60 guys, we'll supply you with 60 uniforms of the exact um, uh, replica period uniforms of the Māori contingent. So that's where really where it came from. Yeah. We just put a call out two weeks from the uh, the day to through the media here to Māori guys between the ages of 17 and 39, 40. Come on, slow palms. One, two, three. Come on, shut. How many were brown arms? Brown arms! Over about three or four days, 70 young men turn up uh, who we later found out some of them were the descendants of the 60 who uh, wanted to march and um, that's how it all came about. I uh, uh, They're doing better than I, I thought, but, you know, they're a couple of boys, so they pick up the drill pretty quickly. Uh, it's just, you know, trying to get them into army mode, uh, to strict discipline, and just get them to realise that, you know, it's um, what they're preparing for is they're in front of thousands of people. Oh. Oh.
they haven't quite got it yet that they're being put at the front of the parade and you know and behind them are uh, active or serving personal uh, personnel in the army navy and this is very unusual that civilians would get to march ahead of uh, you know um, present serving uh, forces yeah, I just hope I can hold my camera and take some really good shots. But um, yes, it'll be very emotional on the day. And those guys I've already talked to, you can have a moustache, but it's clean shaven. Remember, we're trying to recreate this and the look that they had way back then. Already, you know, to your credit, you haven't had many hours training, but watching you march, you do look like these guys. Well, they are your great grandfathers. But you've got to have the hair above the, the collar. Um, there's no, no one ever in the army gets away with hair uh, over the collar. And Sir Peter Jackson has decided to issue everybody a uh, beard roll. You've seen the picture? These guys here have got a beard roll. So you're going to have to do this drill with webbing on and a beard roll. Plus you've got the helmet. Uh, it's going to be hot. But it's, I would estimate that the weapons and uniforms that you've got on the day um, comes to $200,000. You're the first ones they see. The Māori them is focused on you. We're going to have the 28 Māori Battalion veterans sitting there watching you and you will remind them of what they were like. When we go in, in on Friday to that Noho Morai, you're trained in an army setting in a camp. There will be no mucking around. We at the uh, 28 Māori Battalion Marae at Manutuki. We're probably, you know, if I give it percentage-wise, we're for the, for the 60. At about, I'd say, close to 90% uh, of where, the, where, the, where I'd like them to be. We just got the, got the kit tonight, uh, hence uh, having a, a, a sort of a semi-dress rehearsal. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Every last <laughs> gruelling, painstaking minute of it. We've had about eight hours of training to prepare for the uh, for the recreation of, of the march, which was uh, the first 60 uh, Māori that, that, that went to war. And we, we're preparing to reenact it from the, the march to uh, Te Pohorawari, uh, down towards the Tairawhiti Museum. They'll take away that experience from here and they'll treasure it forever and ever because there's only a selected few here that have been a part of it, the 60. Um, and those that have lineage to the Tupuna that uh, went away uh, for the First World War. <coughs> when I'm just fitting the boys up and having a look and compare it to current day, I say, whoa, whoa, you know, they were tough, they were tough men in those days. I don't got any blisters, but I'm putting them on just so I don't get any. <laughs> really hard. Mind you, it's all in the kaupapa, representing our ancestors' interests. So this is the webbing. Carry all the ammunition, their water bottle, their bayonet. Got a bit of a shovel around the back. What's the um, garment made of? Uh, so it's wool. And even the buttons are exact replicas of those that were on the original. Yeah, so they've been, yeah, they've been uh, cast and then uh, reproduced in kind of thousands. It's probably about oh, 40 hours, I guess. 40 hours per yeah. uniform. Yeah. And how much would a uniform cost? Oh. About uh, 1500 bucks. <laughs> 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 Oh, there we go. There you go. So they've got little hooks on the side. 
あ、いまてあつはぬみえいてり。あ、こちらウリムあ、こちられなた。ら、たうまいはれきてまらつ。みんないぶたてからなきゃこいきゃはれきてむらおてあひあ、ぽぽ。かはれ。かはれ、お
in looking at the 60 youthful faces, you realised what we sent off to war back in World War I were, were our sons and, you know, the, the youth of the race. The second time they did it over here, you know, they had, didn't have their weapons and it was a free-for-all, really, and uh, I, I think that is something of what it might have looked like at Gallipoli uh, on the night that they, they let loose. I was standing in the porch of the house watching that. I thought to myself, yes, I can see how people would be frightened out of their wits when they heard that. They've done a fantastic uh, job, uh, very proud, and, uh, and it's awesome that the way that they've represented their great-great-grandfathers, they've done a fantastic job. So, yes, very proud of them. Uh, absolutely overwhelmed by the whole experience. Yes, very proud of my boys stepping forward to um, contribute for, uh, on behalf of um, the C Company and the T Company. What was it like seeing them marching along? Amazing, absolutely amazing. You yes. Yeah, you must be very proud. Yeah, I, I was, and to capture them on my camera as well was absolutely awesome. Do you all right? Just look this way for one moment, please. All straight to this camera. Go <laughs> and <laughs> Uh, 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 My dad, um, Sam Hamiora Taitua, came home. I'm feeling relieved that we've got it to this point, it's opened. I'm pleased that people see in the building, both outside and inside, what they expected. But I can see by the response of people that they're very moved by what's inside the building. And I feel that, you know, they think we've all done honour to our crowers. Every man here, I guess, has got a story to tell. And uh, to all of us, uh, if we're their mokopuna, they're brave by virtue of the fact that they went. <laughs>
and kite takuneni iaia. Keke a tona tero. Hoki ki te kura. Ko wānanga te ariki hei tōna ingoa. I whaka ingoa te au i muri tōna matanga i ōna ingoa. Ko Walton, ko moana ngārimui, he hoa piripono tonu rāo, ki a rāo i taua wā, o he tangata tino tau tonu te āhua. Mena ko heke no mai ki au nei, o he me pai tonu te rā, hoi anō. Engari he tangata hū māri, Miki. When we started this project in 1994, there were 135 Sea Company veterans alive. Today there's only five. So we always knew that we were snatching stories from the grave. Uh, each year you'd lose some more. In hindsight, I realise now that you're fated to do this. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no way out really from the time that I, I got involved and uh, so I, I guess uh, you know what drives me now is I know it is a really good positive story the story of the uh, Māori Battalion and C Company's role and it can affect the lives of young people in a positive way so that's my motivation is how do we convey this to our youth so that um, when they have to make difficult choices in life they choose the right path particularly in a world where there's not a lot of good stories about Māori. This is one of the, you know, the good ones. I'd hope that when I see them in the next world, they'd shake my hand and say, well done. Mei kore ngā rangahau a Monty Suta mō te ono te kau i wehe atu i te tai rā whiti he ko tahi rau tau ki muri. Ka kore rawa rātou e whakaaro nuitia i ngā uri. O e nei rā. Mā tēnei whare taonga ngā rau maharatanga mō te hoko whitu a atu e tieki mā ngā uri a ngā rautau. Kei te heke mai. Hey, Paul.